Well, hello and welcome to uh, worship here at Port Elgin United Church. We welcome you to our fourth Sunday of Lent already. I'm Reverend Heather McCarroll, and with us today we have Nancy and Jim Klein, who have come to lead us through our music and to add some melody to our fourth Sunday of Lent of service. We have Susan and George Brown, who are back and up running the AV booth with us today. And we have June Van Baskeler, who has come to both help with the scripture reading and to help lead us through our Lenten candle liturgy. And before we get started today, I would like to just do a quick thank you to the UCW who ran a bake sale yesterday from the church. All of those who supported this venture, all of you who came and purchased, uh, pre-purchased your baking and all those who did the baking. I especially want to commend the UCW for finding new and innovative ways for us to be innovative ways for us to be the church during this time. So thank you. Now here we gather on land that has been occupied for centuries. Long before it was claimed to be a united church, this land was the traditional territory of the Saugeen Ojibwa Nation, the collective of the Chippewas of Saugeen First Nation, and the Chippewas of Nawash and Cedit First Nation. We thank those who cared for the land before us and we pledge to work as partners as we move into the future. And now I'm going to ask June to help me, and we're actually going to start our service with the uh, Lenten Candle Liturgy. Today is the fourth Sunday of the season of Lent. As a community of faith, we have been traveling with Jesus through story, song, and prayer on his final journey to Jerusalem. And in this way, and in our own personal experiences of faith, we have witnessed God's profound love made known to the world in the life and in the ministry of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, God's love lights the way for those who choose to follow. As we extinguish the fourth Lenten candle, we lament the ways in which we sometimes lose sight of the light of Christ and harden our hearts to the needs of others. As we watch the smoke rise, we remember that God's Spirit is with us in mysterious and visible ways, and that we are forgiven, blessed, and encouraged to open our hearts and our lives to God. And we raise our voices in song, a prayer to you, O God. Give us eyes to see you clearly, make us children of your light. Give us hearts to live more nearly, as your gospel shining bright, as your gospel shines. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. In this reading, we are reminded of God's love for us and of the importance of living in the light of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. 
May we be blessed by today's reading of God's holy word. Well, here we are. It has been exactly a year to this day that COVID-19 became a big, big part of our lives. COVID-19 entered into our ministry in a big way exactly a year ago today. I mean, do you recall a year ago going into the grocery stores and the shelves were completely empty? I can remember walking through Foodland in Owen Sound and being shocked at how empty everything was, how everything had been picked over. And do you remember the, uh, the toilet paper panic that happened about a year ago right now? Yeah, everybody was filling up their garages and their storage sheds with as much toilet paper as possible. And then there was the, uh, the wipes, right, and the, and the spray for your countertops. You're still not easy to find that stuff here in Grey Bruce. And of course, who can forget the six-month-long March break that all of the students had? It started just about a year ago right now. And do you recall how we stayed glued to the news, hoping that we would hear some explanation to what was happening and why it was happening, how long it was going to happen, and what it was going to mean for each and every one of us? I recall at one point receiving an email telling me to gargle with hot water every two hours, and I would be sure not to get COVID-19. There was something in there about apple cider vinegar as well. Well, we've learned a lot since then about COVID-19. And it's far more invasive than anything any of us or most of us have ever encountered in our lifetime. It has been a very surreal year between today and a year ago today. And like it or not, COVID-19, it isn't going anywhere quite yet. We've done well in Grey Bruce. We've had two days in a row now with absolutely no new cases. And I believe at this point we're down to 11 active cases in all of Grey Bruce. But we've also learned locally but that doesn't give us a license to go into restaurants, take our masks off, and eat in a large group. We still need to manage our masks. I think the way they do it, there's three M's. Mask, remember your distance, and to wash your hands. And then we can keep this at bay. I'm really grateful that some, like even Nancy was telling me, she's got her COVID shot. And I know that my parents have gotten their COVID vaccine. So we're getting there. Bit by bit, we're getting there. Now, thankfully, Despite the church doors being locked, we were able to continue to offer worship each week during the pandemic. Our online views grew more than five times in one week alone. And we began to learn what it may meant to be a faith community virtually. Each week we sang together, prayed together, and shared in the scripture readings, seeking understanding, comfort, and assurance. And today's scripture reading that June just shared that passage has an important message for us as we mark this most unwelcomed anniversary. There's one verse I want us to hear again, and it's one that you can probably recite without having to open your Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This has got to be the most popular verse in the entire Bible. It has been splashed across billboards, t-shirts, license plate, um, stickers, bumper stickers. This verse, everyone knows this verse, whether they're a person of faith or not. And you see, in this verse, Jesus articulates what Luther has called the gospel in a nutshell. Basically, what this verse reminds us is that God is fundamentally a God of love. 
That love is the logic by which the kingdom of, of God's kingdom runs. And that God's love trumps everything else. Now I realize not everyone takes a look at that verse and sees it quite the way that I see it. I mean, after all, Jesus goes on to say that everyone who believes will have eternal life, which perhaps implies that a different outcome for those who don't believe. But you had to read on. For in the next verse, it states that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Quite honestly, this passage is about crisis. It's about how we can respond to crisis. The passage makes it clear that in the judgment to come, it's not punishment, but simply the crisis that befalls those who will not come out of the darkness for fear of the light. It's not judgment as punishment, but judgment as crisis, as tragedy, as loss. God comes in love to redeem such loss, to turn such tragedy into victory, and demonstrates true power in a way the world would never recognize power. Jesus came to show us that there's power in vulnerability. There is power in sacrifice. Jesus came not to love power, but to show us the power of love. And the kind of self-sacrificing love that Jesus offers is kind of frightening to our world, to those who are not of the faith. It's really frightening and easily misunderstood. I mean, no wonder, as the scripture tells us today, that some run and they hide, because it requires us to trust nothing other than God to trust in something we can't quite grasp a hold of, to trust in something we can't quite lay our eyes upon. And most of us find it next to impossible to embrace Jesus' example, except when we find ourselves brought low by such things as illness or loss, broken relationships, disappointed hopes, or by a pandemic that has outlasted a year. You see, when we find ourselves in a situation that no matter our wealth, no matter our physical strength, or what position we hold at our workplace or in the community, we cannot change it no matter what. No matter how many words we use, no matter how we try to dodge all the rules and regulations, we still cannot avoid the effects of that situation in our lives. We can fall into despair. We can become depressed or feeling helpless. And I believe that is what has made COVID-19 most difficult for a lot of people. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't change the fact that the pandemic has been calling the shots for a year now. However, for those who truly understand today's scripture passage, for those who know what it means to give in to the love and the power of Christ, well, they know a secret a secret that has sustained them through this year of the pandemic, a secret that helps buoy their spirits despite whatever circumstances they may be facing. And the secret is complete dependence on God. Like if you take a look at that passage that June just read to us, have you ever noticed, has it ever occurred to you that God does not ever ask our permission before sending Jesus to die for us? I know, I know that but that may seem like an odd detail to point out. But have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about God's persistent love? Have you ever thought about how God has total control over this persistent love? You see, we would like to think that only bad things happen to us that we have no control over. But while we have been dealing with this pandemic, there's something else that has also been holding us that we have no control over, something beautiful, something sustaining something that our scripture passage today reminds us of. Reverend David Loss, he shared a story that helps us to understand what it means to lean into God's persistent love. He writes, years ago, I preached a sermon about the nature of God's grace, suggesting that we might add four words to the end of our service of baptism, saying, child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, like it or not. 
Those are the four words, like it or not. A few weeks later, a friend shared a bedtime encounter he had with his then six-year-old son. See, the six-year-old son was upset that his father was putting him to bed earlier than he wanted to go. So the son said, Daddy, I just hate you right now. And the father replied, well, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I, I still love you. And the son responded, Dad, don't say that. I'm sorry, but it's true. I love you. Don't, the son protested. Don't say that again. At which point the father, remembering the words of the sermon, I love you, like it or not. And that is what God has been saying to us throughout this entire year. I love you, like it or not, and I will not leave you. Only when we've died to all the delusions of actually being in control do we realize that such loss of perceived freedom and power is actually finding life itself. I mean, we talked about that last week in the passage. When we give our other power over to God, we find life. And that is what it means to truly be a disciple. You see, God's love is persistent. And so God's love will continue to chase after us, seeking to hold on to us and redeem us all the days of our life, whether we like it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not. And perhaps the pandemic has created a situation that may help us to be more ready to realize the truth about God's love. God's love has surrounded us through all our fears, all of our complaining, all our anxiety, and all our frustrations throughout this entire year. It has been surrounding all the frontline workers who must be completely exhausted right now. And it has been upholding all those who grieve after the multitude and multitude of deaths. So as we remember God's persistent love, we might also realize that this is the one relationship in our life which we have no power. And it is the one relationship that we cannot screw up. Because God created it, and God maintains it. God is the one who we can take all our frustrations, anger, and fear to. God is the one we can turn to when we feel lost, when we feel lonely. And we can turn to when we feel as though there is no other way out. I love what I heard at Bible study a couple of weeks ago. It was suggested that we make God such a good friend of ours that we make God our gossip buddy. So when you feel like complaining about others or you want to talk about others, just turn to God and share it all there. Become friends with the one persistent love that has always been and always will be present with you. See, the truth is, God's love is deeper, wider, and higher than anything that we can imagine. And so as we mark this one year anniversary of the pandemic, we do so remembering we belong to a God who will bring everything to a good end, eternally. And all through the power of God's vulnerability, sacrifice, and ever persistent love. Look for it around you and you'll begin to recognize it. And may we remember we are held by a great love that will never let us go. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to light a candle, a candle of hope, to mark the year that we have been through and to mark the year of which we now head into and say a prayer that has been sent to us by the moderator of the United Church of Canada. And so let us pray. Well, dear Holy One, it's been a year a year since the pandemic hit this part of the world. And we realize that for the safety of each other and all our neighbors, we need it to be a congregation that wouldn't congregate. Well, not in person at least. We found other ways. Old technologies like paper mail and telephone trees and new technologies like Zooming and pastoral care by phone and video. We found ways of being together with each other and with you. It's not the same, and there are parts of it that we're missing. But we found ways to live the ministry you have given us, to be Jesus' disciples, 
to share your love with each other and with the whole world. We remember those who have died from the virus. We remember those who are ill. We remember the healthcare workers, the researchers, the grocery store clerks, the delivery drivers, all who must work for the care of the world in their own way. We remember all those who are grieving, all those who are afraid, all those who wait, and we pray. So on this anniversary, we ask that you would help us to recognize each other, to know that in all of this, you have been here and are and always will be with every part of our creation. So give us strength to keep on, give us grace in our frustrations, and give us hope for tomorrow. Give us life and life abundant, that we might be people who live in the world physically distanced but socially together, faces masked but hearts opened, hands washed but ready to get to the work you have for us. We pray in Jesus' name, carried by the wings of the Holy Spirit and meshed in the Creator's love, we pray. Amen. The wonder of your cross shall be our meditation. Together in that shadow as the sun went down to weep with those who thought that you were leaving you were leaving Jesus the humble king who never wore an earthly crown to steal away at night when they took down your body with love and tears to That was beautiful. And so one way in which Christ's light can be found in the world is when we share our resources and ourselves to help build up the kingdom of God. And so now is our opportunity to offer up both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So let us pray. Well, dear source of life, receive the gifts we offer and let all our service inspired by the breath of life give you glory and praise. In the name of the word of life we pray, amen. And we'll now join together in our final hymn for today's service, Blessed Assurance, verses one and three. So as you leave this time of worship and step back onto the Lenten journey, go knowing that God is our rock, Christ is our friend, and the Holy Spirit is our companion. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God so Surround you everywhere, everywhere. 